Good day folks, Neil here from Southwest Adventures. Today I'm going to show you 10 basic nuts that you should know. These nuts are made from rope. There are two types of rope. There is natural fiber, which can either be cotton, coconut core, or sisal, and there is synthetic rope, which is usually made from petroleum based products. Ropes are used in many ways in seamanship, farming, hunting, construction, outdoor pursuits, craft, and even rescue. This knot we're going to make is called a figure of eight knot. All right, and this is how we're going to do it. You're going to make a bite in your rope. You're going to go over like this, back on the with the stand, with the working end, so you have a, a eight, and then you're simply going to go back through, pull it tight, all right? So there you have it, figure of eight knot. This knot can be used as a stopper knot to prevent the end of a rope roving through a block or a carabiner or a fair lead, right? So there you have it, stopper knot. Okay, this is another application of the figure of eight knot. You could simply pass this end around an object like this, and you could uh, just follow the rope back through like this. Follow the rope back through like this. All right, you go back under. Just keep following the rope. Go alongside the rope and follow it. Come back through. Another application of the um, figure of eight knot. I'm going to make now a double sheet bend, and this is how it's done. It is used to join rope of unequal sizes, right? So I made I made a bite with one of the rope. I've seen here. Then I'm going to take the working end of the other rope, pass it from underneath. Okay, pull it through, pass it around this rope here twice, once and twice and just simply pull it together like this and this is a double sheet bend very easy to loose just simply very easy to loose and the single sheet bend which is less effective is simply like you pass it once but I recommend the double sheet bend any day as it does a better job. Double sheet bend. Can't go wrong. Let's do it twice. And it's more secure and everything. This knot I'm going to show you here is called the clovage. And it is used to attach a line to a spa, a railing, or a ring. It's a very versatile knot. And it's simple to, to do. Pass it around once, twice, and I'm simply gonna come under this one now. Pull it tight. Draw it tight, slow it. It's called a rolling hitch. It kind of similar. It's kind of similar to the clovis, but it's more secure. And this is how we're done. It is done. Pass the rope once, you go over like this, you go one more time, and you simply tuck this end back underneath here, and you pull it tight. So this knot is very effective when there's a lengthwise pull like this, or on the opposite side like this. The next one I'm going to make here is called the Alpine Butterfly Knot and you could use this knot to attach a middle climber in a team of three. It can also be used to permit the temporary use of a damaged rope 
by isolating a flawed section within the loop. And this is how it's done. You're going to pass the rope once around your hand like this, twice, three times. You're going to take the middle loop. You're going to pull it like this. You're going to take the bite, pass it under these two here like this. Right? And just simply tug, tug on it like this. And there you have it, the alpine butterfly knot. So another climber can simply attach himself onto this part here. If they need be. Now if there is a damage in your rope, you could also put the damaged part right here and still use the rope here. Alpine butterfly knot. Next knot I'm going to make is called a fireman chair knot and this is how it's done. It's done in the bite of the root, right? You're not using the ends at all. First, you make a overhand loop like this, then you make a next underhand loop now, next to it. So you have two loops, you have an overhand loop, you have an underhand loop, over, under, right? Then you're going to put it over each other like this. You're going to come from underneath, grab this end, you're going to come from on top and grab this end and pull it like this. And this knot is called a handcuff knot. If I put my hand like this, it tightens, it's a handcuff knot, release. Okay, so first you're going to take this, let's say you're going to average the size of the person and you're going to make your, your bite. Like this, and then now you're going to simply make a loop like this and put this bite into the loop, pull it tight, and you're going to do the same thing on the opposite end. You're going to make a bite like this, you're going to put this bite into the loop. And this knot could be used to lower a person from an upper floor to a lower floor. So let's let's go and try it out and let's see how it works. The fireman's chair knot was traditionally used for upper floor rescues in the past. And um, this is a subtle demonstration here. There's a person at the ground level and there's a person at the upper floor. And the victim in the middle here. The rope is passed around the leg and around the waistline, lower part of the waist. The only thing that I would have done differently, I would have passed that rope twice around the railing so that I would have more control and there would be more friction to effect the rescue. So I'm going to demonstrate in a little bit how I'm going to lower myself from a height without any assistance. So I'm going to show you how to lower yourself using the fireman chair knot. So you see, one end is around my thigh and the other end is on my lower part of my back here. Nice and easy. This knot that we are going to make here is called the sheep shank. First, you're going to arrange your rope to the length you want it. So you're going to place them neatly side by side. And then at the end, you're going to make a loop. And then you're going to place the bite into the loop. And then you're going to take the end and pass it through that bite. You're going to do the same thing on the opposite end. You're going to make a bite, sorry, a loop, pass it through the bite, and then pass the end through the bite there. If if you have a damage in your rope 
ideally you will place it in the middle of the roof and um, this will render your roof usable or although it has damage on it so there you have it sheep shank shorten and strengthen a roof okay what we're going to make today is called a bowline and a double bowline as well so first this is the working end this is the standing end on the standing end you're going to make a overhand loop like this and then you're going to decide how big you want to make your eye depend on the size of the bollard or what have you and you're simply going to take the working end pass it through this loop come over the standing end and go back through the loop come alongside this one here and you simply draw it tight this is the bowline now if you want to make a double bowline you're just going to make it over and show you there you're going to make an overhand loop like this and then you're going to make another overhand loop like this so you have two overhand loop as you can see here two overhand loop like this pass it through once you go over the standing end and back through bring it alongside here and you simply draw it tight and there you have it double bowline more secure and everything else okay what i'm gonna make now is called timber hitch and traditionally this this nut was used to pull timber and this is how it's done right pass the rope around the timber you make a bite like this a bite right and you simply pass it once twice three times maybe four times even better and you simply tug it tight pull your timber pull your timber and it's very easy to unmute just simply pull on it like this and you undo it very simple to undo timber hitch this nut is called a highwayman hitch Traditionally, it was used by those um, cowboys back in the Wild West when they go on a bank robbery. So this is how they, they used to tie their horse so that when they come back onto the horse, they could release it quickly. So you first you make a bite with the rope, put it around the reeling like this, then you make a bite with the standing end, put it through, pull it snug, then you make a bite with the working end, put it through, pull this other end snug. All right, so this end now will be tied to the horse. All right, so when they come back and they jump on the horse, they will simply tug on this one and they will escape. 